Hey everybody, I just want to talk to you here for a few minutes and encourage some of you leaders and pastors of some smaller churches. What can you do to ignite some new growth in your ministry and in your church? Coming right up. All right, uh, today my name is Tom Scarella and uh, we've been in full-time ministry over 35 years now. And uh, the Lord has really greatly blessed us. We've ministered in well over a thousand churches, literally all over the world. And so today I was uh, wanting to share with you about igniting new growth in your ministry or in your church. And I just want to give you a few uh, short or few small things that you can do. Maybe you have a, a church under 100 or even under 50 and you find yourself discouraged and things of that nature. What are some things that you can do to ignite, you know, <laughs> just as we ignite a fire, what are some things that you can do to ignite new growth in your ministry? Well, there's some things that you can do as far as for those of you who are pastoring a smaller church, for example, under a hundred people, <clears throat> under 50 people, even uh, newer church plants. And sometimes some guys find themselves they get and gals they find themselves getting very discouraged they they look at their current situation and it's not moving it's not moving it's not moving but let me just encourage you with this is that many times uh in speaking with pastors of the smaller churches um what i found is this is number one is to push through that two-year mark there's something about, uh, uh, you know, just banging away after it and perseverance. So number one is perseverance. Persevere through that two-year mark. Don't start, stop, start, stop, start, stop. It becomes confusing to people because some, not everybody's a jumper. You know, if you go swimming or you watch kids swimming, and you watch him and the first kid jumps. I mean, he doesn't think about it. He's already in the air. He's already diving in, right? The second kid comes and he follows behind and he's kind of like a little bit more sheepish, but he jumps in. The third kid uh, follows behind and the fourth kid just kind of watches for a while. Maybe he dips his toes in the water and he's gonna think about it a while. He's gonna calculate, is it cold, is it safe? I don't know this, you know, these, this body of water and stuff. And that's where a lot of people are with your church and ministry. They want to see, are you in it for the long haul or are you just in and out if nothing happens? Because they've seen that before where people have given up because of discouragement. So there's something about perseverance. Plus the Holy Spirit wants to see if you'll be faithful. Amen. So number one is perseverance. Number two is that you'd be willing to to set goals for your ministry. If you shoot for nothing, you'll hit it every time. See, many, uh, you talk to the majority of churches that are year after year in a small place, under 100, under 50, you ask them, what are your numerical goals? What are your salvation goals? What are your uh, financial goals? What are some of these different goals? Mm, we never, we just follow the Holy Spirit. That's their, that's their answer. And while that sounds real noble and that sounds real radical and stuff, that's not a reality. Is that any good farmer, and Jesus talked about the kingdom of God is like a farm. Any good farmer has a plan. He doesn't just say, well, we'll get a crop. I don't know when, uh, I don't know how it'll get planted or when it'll, the Holy Spirit will show me when to do it. That's just called laziness, okay? That's called laziness. And so I challenge you today in this video, if you do not have a goal, have a faith goal. So number two is a faith goal. Number one is perseverance, but number two is have a faith goal. Begin to, you know, say for example, you're 50 people and you've been 50 people for five years. Okay, so five years later, you've not gone to where you wanna be yet, okay? And the age old saying that says, you know, well, you know, I'm into quality, not quantity. That sounds so deep. <laughs> Yet there's nowhere in scripture that you find that. In fact, Jesus told the parable of the talents and he didn't say to the one with the one talent, well, at least you got good quality because I'm into quality, not quantity. No, no, no. The master was looking for quantity. 
And that's why he threw him out. He had no quantity. So part of our <clears throat> endeavor is to reach as many people for Christ as possible. Amen? Can we agree with that? Okay, so if that's the case, then you have to have a goal. You have to shoot for something. I mean, the sights on a gun are there to set a goal. That's the goal. That's the mark. So what is your mark? So if you're 50 people, my suggestion is this, is set a, uh, a goal of, say, uh, three new people, or say, two new people a month. That's a very attainable goal. But then you got to ask yourself, January, what are we doing to get two brand new people a month? Hmm, we're doing nothing outside of just having service. Ah, so that means I have to do something out of this building to reach two new people per month. But think about that. In a year now, you have grown, what is that, 20%? You've already grown 20% in, in 12 months at uh, uh, two people. Oh, no, excuse, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, that's right. So more than, than that, right? And so that's why I want to encourage you with is that there's something about you beginning to set those faith goals. Set those faith goals that begin to propel your ministry. And uh, your faith goals will begin to lead you and guide you. We as a traveling ministry, we have faith goals. We have faith goals for churches, new places, souls, uh, finances, all that stuff. You need to know where your finances are. You need to know where you are. I know some of you pastors that are watching this, you say, I know nothing about the finances. I know nothing about who gives. Okay, that sounds radical. But you talk to any business owner, any manager, he needs to know where the money is, how much it is, and where it's going. You have to have a hand in it, okay? So number two is a faith goal. Uh, number three is you need to have your church as a safe place for people to come. I've got relatives, and I don't want to get too descriptive, but I've got relatives that uh, once knew Christ, but don't want anything to do with church because all they ever heard was hellfire and brimstone and you're a nothing and a nobody and you're never going to do anything and you don't pray enough, you don't give enough, and, and you're not a good enough husband, you're not a good enough wife, you're not a good enough children. And and, and so they said, they said to me, literally, I felt worse after church than I did before church. So their thought is, I'll just not go back and I'll feel better about myself. Okay. So number three is be an encouragement. A play. I'm not saying water down the, the gospel. I'm saying, hey, keep the gospel at full strength. Jesus is the only way. The blood of Jesus is the only way. The only thing that cleanses sin. However, at the same time, don't beat the people, scolding the people, all right? Um, because most of the people in your community are really in a place of discouragement, okay? And so they need to come to a place where they feel encouraged, and you need to be that voice in their life. Number four, I'm going to give you a bonus one here this morning. A bonus one is this, is people are lonely. People are lonely. Now, you know this, I know this, but not only church people are lonely, but the lost are lonely. So you have to ask yourself, what are you doing to reach those lost people to um, impact them, to make them want to become a part of the church family? Amen. So I challenge you to do that. So begin to start to think, wow, people are lonely. For example, they say that, now I'm just talking in the U.S., the most stressful thing outside of death in America is a move. Is when somebody has to relocate and move. If somebody moves from Pittsburgh to Los Angeles or from Seattle and they move all the way to Arkansas. <clears throat> and now they, they know nobody, their, their, their children have no friends, they have no friends, they know nobody, they don't know where anything is, and if the church is quiet and doesn't reach out to brand new people who have just moved in, where are they gonna find their source of friends? Bars, clubs, uh, restaurants. And so now they're being the encouragement to lonely people. <clears throat> Amen. And so 
That's why I want to encourage you. They say the most likely people to get saved over 18 are those who have gone through a relocation. Over eight, I mean, up until the age of 18, there's a high likelihood, likelihood of people being saved. But after 18, it plummets. It goes straight down. And the number one thing that leads them to Christ, the number one thing that leads them to Christ is when they've moved and they don't have any friends and they're lonely. Okay, so take advantage of that to win the lost. And so I pray these things help you and your ministry. Do us a huge favor. Uh, send us uh, an email. Let us know where you are in the country. We would love to speak with you and encourage you and maybe share some uh, other things with you as well. We even do some uh, coaching and mentoring. You can go right on our website, sharethefire.org. Uh, those of you watching this video, you can click right below me. Uh, and you can give us a thumbs up. That'll help push the algorithms of uh, YouTube, as well as don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We love you guys, bless you, and I hope this helps you. Give this a shot this year and watch. The Lord will bless your ministry. And I pray that the Lord blesses and multiplies your ministry like never before. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Bless you.